The name of the game is presented by Bravo, the marketing arm of Ash Brokerage Corporation, the practice enhancement company. Welcome to Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. Hi everyone, I'm your host Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money gamer extraordinaire. Everybody in America knows they need to protect their loved ones, business partners, and the charities they love. Now more than ever, the protection they need is available for pennies on the dollar. On today's show, we're featuring our tribute to Life Insurance Awareness Month with special guest consumer reporter Cassie Rohde. We've taken the time to go online and answer some of the most popular questions by consumers. It's a Take No Prisoners expose. We're going to let the chips fall where they may in our tribute to Life Insurance Awareness Month for 2013. In the G segment, it's game on between term and permanent life insurance. In the A segment, we're going to cherry pick the most popular questions from online consumers. In the M segment, I'll take the consumer questions about using life insurance for income. And in the E segment, you'll hear how life insurance impacted the families of 911. Well, welcome to the show, Cassie. Thank you. Well, I really enjoy having somebody in a different generation than me and a different gender because you're bringing questions. You, your generation is really the Googleites out there, the people that troll the web with all these consumer questions. And we have a lot of questions today that we're going to take directly from insurancelibrary.com. That This site is so huge because so many consumers ask so many questions. And what we try to do is talk about all the answers to life insurance, long-term care, annuities, disability insurance, retirement. There's so many subjects online. Today, though, we're going to go to the life insurance section of insurancelibrary.com. And in that section, we've taken so many, I mean, I can't get everything on the show, so I try to kind of put it down, figure out the most consistent and popular questions that come from consumers. And of course, it's from my answers on library.com. And Cassie, what is our first question? Um, which is better, term or whole life insurance? Well, this is the war zone in our industry and in consumerism. Everybody's always asking, Steve, is term better or should I buy permanent? It always matters on one issue. What is the client's goals? If the client's financial obligations, their financial liabilities, their future obligations, and anything that they're doing for charities, if any of that is temporary, then I say buy term insurance all day long. It's the cheap way to go. But if I have ongoing liabilities, anything that's gonna be on into perpetuity or for the rest of my life, I need to really look at permanent forms of insurance. Just a heads up. The number one permanent form of insurance is final expense, and it happens late in your early 60s. So when you think about this, if we would have had this done earlier in life, we wouldn't have to actually deal with buying permanent insurance for final expense in my 60s and 70s. Just a thought. What's our next question? Uh, what age does term life insurance end? Well, remember, if you're 50 and under, you can buy term insurance at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 30 years, and a few carriers out there are now doing it at 40 years that you can lock down. As you get older, over 50, you can't get that kind of length of coverage, so it starts to go to 20 years for maybe a 60 year or a 15 year or a 10 year. It gets smaller as you get older, but it's guaranteed. And does it end? Some of these contracts, keep in mind, some of these contracts have convertibility clauses. So you can actually convert your term to permanent if your lifestyle actually calls for it. All right. Well, what happens when a term life insurance ends? Well, when it ends and you haven't exercised the convertibility option, it terminates and it's done. You have no more coverage. And that's why I always say to people, once you get close to the window of your convertibility, you need to sit down with your advisor, and your advisor should be doing this proactively with you, sit down with your advisor and say, hey, what should I do? Should I get a new contract? And remember, never let that contract lapse and end if you think you're still gonna need ongoing coverage. Remember, is your financial liabilities, are they temporary or are they perm? Are your future obligations temporary or permanent? Are your issues that you wanna do in regards to charities, is it temporary or permanent? Once you start asking those questions, you can say, how should I go when I, my term insurance end? Well, is term life insurance mandatory for a mortgage? You know what? If you're not putting enough down on a deposit, for sure the banking institution is going to ask you to make sure that you have life insurance, not only on yourself, but if you're buying the mortgage predicated on two incomes, they're going to want to cover both, both of you to make sure that if something happens, that that mortgage gets paid off. So yes, if you're doing, and the rule of thumb is generally, if you're not willing to put down 20% of the value of the home, the odds are you're going to have to buy some sort of mortgage insurance, which is generally term. 
what are important provisions in most term life insurance policies? Well, I want to know the guaranteed period for sure. I want to know my guaranteed um, premium that I have to pay. I also want to know, is there a window of convertibility in case I want to extend coverage? Some of these contracts actually offer riders called return on premium rider. I want to know, hey, maybe I want to look at that because would it be great to go 20 years term and get all my money back? So I'm looking at provisions like that. And of course, I'm always looking how strong is the company? What's the rating of the company? What's the balance sheet items? And is this a, is this a competitive quote? Remember, you can go online. There are so many great vendors out there in the brokerage community that are really using all the carriers and you'll see a competitive spreadsheet and you'll be able to see that on the grid and be able to say, these companies are better than the other companies. You can kind of price it out and compare, compare pricing. If you want your own life insurance workbook that includes how to calculate the amount that you need for your family or business, just email me at steve.savant at ashbrokerage.com. I'll email you our free quote questionnaire for life insurance from some of the most competitive insurance companies in the market. The questionnaire will take about 13 minutes. Is your business or family worth 13 minutes? I'm sure it is. When we come back from the break, Cassie and I are going to answer some of the most popular questions from our online consumers in the A segment of our show. We'll be right back after the break. Take a close look at your hard-earned dollar. How do you think your money's doing? Are you keeping an eye on it? Is it protected from taxes, inflation, and market risk? Over time, those Washingtons could become Franklins. With Tax Advantaged Indexed Universal Life, from one of the largest distributors of Index Universal Life, Ash Brokerage. Well, welcome back to The Name of the Game. I'm Steve Savant with Cassie Rohde, our online consumer reporter. And just a heads up, before moving forward with anything that you hear on our show, always consult your tax advisor and your legal counsel. Coming up in the A segment, Cassie and I are going to answer the most popular questions from our online consumers. Well, welcome back to our second segment, our A segment, and we're taking some of the great calls and consumer questions that we've seen out on the web on our mainstay consumer website, insurancelibrary.com. And on Insurance Library, it talks about so many subjects. Today, we're talking about life insurance as our main subject. And in that subject, I'm going to take the questions that I've answered from consumers directly from me, Steve Savant. So Cassie, what's some of our questions that we're having in our tribute today? Uh, can you have two life insurance policies? Well, you can have as many as you want. Just keep in mind that the total death benefit can exceed justification rules, which means you can't just buy a $20 million life insurance policy if you really don't have $20 million worth of assets and liabilities. So there's always going to be a justification limit. What's the top? Can you have multiple contracts? Sure. Can you have multiple policies? Without question. But the total death benefit cannot exceed what most underwriters would say is your top limitation because of your finances. Uh, what is face value of life insurance? Well, face value is the amount that you're going to buy. And remember, face value can be static. It can be level. Some contracts will actually add, like participating whole life, their dividends may actually buy paid up additions, and that makes your in increase in your face amount, as well as sometimes people will use increasing option in current assumption universal life, and that will increase your death benefit. And then at maturity, some contracts will actually, the death benefit will equal, equal the cash value. Um, is life insurance worth it for kids? Well, that's a good question because some people say you should lock in the insurability for a child when they're young. So in case they have any issues, they already have a contract that's written and it's not rated because of an impairment. The second issue is sometimes people will buy contracts for children for college planning. Just a heads up, I have to see a really good rate of return and a very low use of death benefit on contracts like that for me to be enthusiastic about it. When does a life insurance policy go into effect? The moment you receive an offer from the, from the company, the only way they know you've accepted it is twofold. One, I wrote a check for the modal premium, whatever that is. It could be monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, annually. And the second is, is they, you, that the agent delivered the policy to my hand. I signed a delivery statement. And in most states, you have a 10, 20, or in some states, 30-day free look. If you have any kind of buyer's remorse after that time, you can hand it back in. No harm, no foul, and they return your money. Hmm. Uh, why do people have life insurance? Well, they do it because they want to protect the people in their life that would suffer in their demise. 
I'm married, I've been married to the same guy almost 40 years. If something happened to me, I wanna make sure the mortgage is paid off, that the, the retirement is fully funded because I'd still be working and now I'm not gonna be able to. I wanna cover all my future obligations. I wanna be able to, to really help the charities of my choice. So I wanna make sure I'm protecting my loved ones, my business partners, and the charities that I love. And why are life insurance proceeds not taxable? Interesting. The government years ago made a decision, and I mean a, almost a century ago, that the proceeds for the most part, there are some exceptions to the rule, but for proceeds for the most part are going to go directly to the beneficiaries of the policy. And that goes tax-free. They think this is a huge benefit for society, and that all started because they wanted to make sure that widows were taken care of back in the day. Uh, which ones are the best life insurance policies? Well, the word best is kind of relative, right? Remember, suitability, product suitability is based on a client's personal financial documents, their profile. It includes their risk assessment, how long, be, how long they're going to need the coverage. All these things make a choice, whether I'm going to be using term insurance, participating whole life, current assumption universal life, or any of the variations of current assumption universal life. What is the death benefit of a life insurance policy? Well, the death benefit is similar to the face, remember, because these are kinds, and here's one of our problems sometimes, we're not a standardized industry. The face amount is the death benefit amount. But remember, the face amount starts out at whatever that number is, let's say a million dollars. But the actual death benefit amount option could tell me if I'm going to increase my coverage and does that do it automatically or do I have to have performance? Like in a participating whole life, I actually have to have performance by the dividend to buy paid up additions that will actually increase my death benefit. And when do we need life insurance? I say the moment you become somewhat responsible. Now, I have to say, I was married for 10 years. I don't know how responsible I was in the first 10 years of our marriage. But when you start getting married and you start committing to a mortgage, you start committing to auto payments, you're committing to credit card debt, you start to have children, you need to have that kind of life insurance coverage because you never want to leave your family members, your business partners, or the charity that you love in a lurch because you died and left all these liabilities and future obligations unfulfilled. Well, what happens if I die without life insurance? It's really a tragedy. You cannot understand how a person living in a mortgage, in a home with a mortgage, two people with their income, that one income, when that person dies, they're now subject to trying to support that mortgage and all the other commitments. And I have to tell you, nine times out of 10 when that occurs, Cassie, they have to sell the home. So it's a tragedy. If you want your own life insurance workbook that includes how to calculate the amount you need for your family or business, just email me at steve.savant at ashbrokerage.com and I'll email you our free quote questionnaire for life insurance from some of the most competitive life insurance companies in the market. The questionnaire will take about 13 minutes. Is your family and business worth 13 minutes? I'm sure it is. When we come back from the break, Cassie and I are going to answer questions from our online consumers on life insurance for income in the end segment of our show. We'll be right back after the break. Take a close look at your hard-earned dollar. How do you think your money's doing? Are you keeping an eye on it? Is it protected from taxes, inflation, and market risk? Over time, those Washingtons could become Franklins. With Tax Advantaged Indexed Universal Life, from one of the largest distributors of Index Universal Life, Ash Brokerage. Welcome back to The Name of the Game. I'm Steve Savant with Cassie Rohde, our online consumer reporter. And just a heads up, before moving forward with any of the ideas on the show, always consult your tax advisor or legal counsel. Coming up in the M segment, Cassie and I are going to answer questions from our online consumers about life insurance for income. Well, Cassie, we're talking about our next section which is going to be very interesting about life insurance and income. Well, kind of shocking. And where are we pulling these questions? Again, we're pulling it from insurancelibrary.com and they have several different subject areas and we're pulling it from the life insurance section. And of course, here's Truly's answer to consumers who are asking me these questions. Cassie, what's our first question? Can you find an IRA with life insurance? Can I fund it? No. Oh, I wish. The day that happens, I think you're going to make a lot of uh, life insurance agents happy. Right now, you cannot use life insurance as a funding vehicle for any of the IRAs or Roth IRAs. What is a surrender charge on life insurance policy? Well, yeah, surrender charges. The company has to protect themselves, and they usually use surrender charges to do it. 
Remember, in anywhere between the first nine years all the way out to sometimes 16 years, there'll be surrender charges. So if you try to terminate your contract, if you try to leave your contract, those charges are going to be assessed against your cash value and you'll get the net proceeds. Is supplemental life insurance pre-tax? No. Again, that's similar to our IRA question. It's always after tax. Remember, there's, there's no exception to the rule on this. But you always have to remember that supplemental retirement income using life insurance is a great idea. Here's where you trade off. You don't get the upfront deduction. It's not pre-tax, as the question asks. But at the end, the withdrawals to basis and policy loans of gain will never generate income on your 1040. That means that your Social Security will never, ever be taxed because of life insurance income off a supplemental plan like that. To me, you're giving up the front end pre-tax, but look what you're getting in, in the rears. The life insurance comes out free, and it doesn't tax your Social Security. Now, remember, your other qualified plans could, but those two items will stay tax-free. And can you borrow against your life insurance? You can. Now, remember, we just talked about surrender charges, right? So remember... What can I get to in my cash value? Well, I have to incorporate that surrender charges are going to be part of that equation. And when I go ahead and borrow, it costs money to borrow. So there's interest involved. Most of the consumers that look at this do not pay the annual interest. So they keep cannibalizing the internal cash values. So they're getting a loan on a loan. It's okay if you have a low loan charge, like zero net cost loans in the contract, or wash loans. But when you start getting into spread loans, direct recognition loans, and especially participating loans in a bad down year for indexing, it's really a concern. So you just got to remember, what are you getting yourself into? And as I always say, buyer beware, know your contract. So is life insurance a good investment? I would never use the word investment because it's really a protection item. But can it be a good savings plan for supplemental retirement? I say yes, it can. You have the option of using dividends, a, a, a contract that uses dividends, a contract that uses interest rates, and a contract that uses indexing. All those abilities are really high end. They can really bring and generate great tax advantaged income later on in life. Is whole life insurance a bad investment? Well, that is one of the top controversies out on consumer online. And I have to tell you, there is, no, there is a bloodletting out there on this whole issue because people are very, very polarized. I take a middle position. If you're very conservative, if you like predictable, guaranteed cash values, and you're willing to make methodical, disciplined deposits into this contract, it could be for a person like you. They don't want anything to do with the market. They don't really like the, the volatility in interest rates. They don't understand or they don't think that indexes is the way to go. That could be the way. It's not an either or. It's not bad or worse. It's what is the propensity or the profile, the financial profile of the possible purchaser of life insurance. If they're pretty conservative, you know, and I have I described, I think that could be a play. What kind of life insurance policy can you borrow against? Well, only permanent cash value policies. So that it's going to include, of course, permanent whole, uh, whole life, participating whole life. It's going to include current company, current, current assumption UL, universal life, index universal life. Those are just some of the ones that you can actually borrow for. Now remember, the odds are I don't want people to borrow early. A couple, they need a couple, two or three years to accumulate cash. So if you're doing this, if you're borrowing this money and you have liquidity needs, you shouldn't be doing this. If you need liquidity, you need to remember, always make sure before you start doing long-term issues like this, do you have emergency funds up? Do you, have, you already have a good cash liquidity, money you can get to? This is not the place you want to be borrowing money in the early years. Now, as you get into midterm and long-term, it can be a place, be your own bank. It could be something you want to look at. And what is cash value of life insurance? Well, the cash value of life insurance, and I like to talk about it in two ways. You have the account cash value, and then you have the surrender charge cash value. Remember, if your contract's still under surrender charges, that means whatever your account value is, less those surrender charges is your actual money. And remember, before I would go ahead and surrender a contract, I'd look to see the loan provisions first. Maybe it's better, and for my benefit, if I borrow the money, no taxation on gain there. As long as I keep the contract in force, cash value contracts can be really good. And when I mean keep the contract in force, I mean keep the contract in force for the life of the policy insured. And what is a life insurance policy that you could cash in? 
Well, any of the ones that I just mentioned will let you cash in their policies. It just depends upon where along the timeline you are. If it's too early in the first two or three years, I don't think there's going to be much cash to cash in. As long as you're a mid to long term idea in your thinking as a saver, then you'll have money you can cash in if you want. I say don't do it. Why don't you borrow it? That's the way to really do it. If you can borrow it and keep it online, no taxes, and you still got money in the bank. If you want your own life insurance workbook that includes how to calculate the amount you need for your family or business, just email me, steve.savant at ashbrokerage.com, and I'll email you our free quote questionnaire for life insurance from some of the most competitive life insurance companies in the market. The questionnaire will take about 13 minutes. Is your family and business worth 13 minutes? I'm sure it is. When we come back from the break, we're going to watch a video clip from 9-11 survivors on the impact of life insurance on their families. We'll be right back after the break. Take a close look at your hard-earned dollar. How do you think your money's doing? Are you keeping an eye on it? Is it protected from taxes, inflation, and market risk? Over time, those Washingtons could become Franklins. With Tax Advantaged Indexed Universal Life, from one of the largest distributors of Index Universal Life, Ash Brokerage. Welcome back to The Name of the Game. I'm Steve Savant with Cassie Rohde, our online consumer reporter. Just a heads up, before moving forward with any of the ideas you hear on our show, always consult your tax advisor or legal counsel. Coming up in the E-segment, we're going to show you an inspiring video clip from surviving families of 9-11 on the impact of life insurance. I was in the fortunate or unfortunate position, depending on how you look at it, of having some 9-11 victims. And I actually ended up doing an interview with the, the surviving spouse. And we both remembered that day to a word the same way. But here's what happened in that room. I walked in that room and there's 200 people there for a memorial service and the door gets closed and it's just her and me. And her question to me was simple. Am I going to be okay? Well, in our world, you better have the right answer. And that has nothing to do with what you sold. It has to do with how much you cared. That's really what we do. And that relationship is what drives me. The ability to make a difference and have a legacy that goes beyond just a day-to-day -day job. Because that's really what we do. We try to help people recover from the unexpected. I have been there emotionally for my children because I'm not consumed with worry about how am I going to take care of them? How am I going to afford to keep a home? I, you know, I, I'm just, I feel like I, I, I'm doing the mothering that I'm supposed to do, as opposed to being the worry ward that I could have been. It's the thing that the life insurance was meant to do. That, that's the whole purpose of it. She says, do you know that you've got a death benefit on this policy? I said, oh, that can't be right. This is my policy. I'm not the one that died. He died. It's not his policy. And she says, no, I checked. I went and checked with my supervisor before calling you because I wanted to make sure before I told you this. And I kept saying, how? And she said, well, it's something your broker did. It felt like a miracle. I don't know how else to describe it. It felt like a miracle. It wasn't a lot of money as these things go, but it saved my house and it saved me. We connected immediately. I could tell that, yes, this is somebody that I wanna invite into my home and to sit down and talk about my life and my husband's life and our family and that type of thing. He came in, um, no pad, no paper, no pen, just sat down and we talked, we had a conversation. Right now we feel tremendous. There's just a sense of kind of calmness. It was such a positive thing. And I had never started that journey expecting to feel so positive at the end of it. It was kind of like one of those things that I wanted to cross off the list and get done. And we're thrilled.
uh, we moved our office about a year and a half ago. And uh, Pam, who's my partner for many years, said, don't come in while during the move because you'll just screw it up. And she was right. And I decided to come in on Sunday when she wasn't there. And I went and looked in the office, and I started counting the boxes that were there. And I got to 110 boxes, and I stopped counting because at that point, I was emotionally overwhelmed because what I realized was in these boxes were files. And in these files were husbands and fathers and mothers and grandmothers. And I didn't know in which one of those files was the person who needed me the most next. And when you think about the enormity of our responsibility to these people, it, it, it absolutely emotionally overwhelmed me. I, I had tears streaming down my face to realize if you can have impact on one of those people, uh, there's, there's not much else you could say. That, that's the place you want to be. That's our show for today. I want to thank Cassie Rohde, our special guest. And remember, you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or just email me at steve.savant at ashbrokerage.com. And don't forget what the good Reverend John Wesley once said, make all you can, save all you can, give all you can. I'm Steve Savant. See you next week.